Welcome, everybody, to Fan Stream Sports, powered by DSP Media. This is the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz, and I'm your host, Rob Fittoff, also known as RPT. You can find me on X at P. Fittoff. This is episode 105 of the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz. This is the Duke Preview. But first things first, head over to our website at fanstreamsports.com. For all additional podcast information, if you have an Apple device, an Android device, please feel free to download the FanStream Sports app. And then head over to our Facebook page, like that page, additional content out there as well. Please feel free to share that with your friends and family. Episode 105, the Duke Preview. And let me just give you some general information for this game. Uh, this will be at Duke. It's also going to be another college game day with ESPN. Notre Dame and Ohio State, they... Uh, they had college game day last week, and now Notre Dame's in the front and center spotlight again. Because uh, usually if you think Duke, I don't know if they've ever had a game day for their football team, obviously for their basketball team, because they are still a basketball school. There's numerous times college game day basketball has been there. But this may be the first time, don't quote me on that, that the actual for football, that college game day is out there. But I want to get this podcast out here a little bit quicker than usual. Uh, We need to get over this Ohio State game. I know it's easier said than done. I still keep thinking in the back of my mind, there were so many chances. Uh, In my previous podcast, five to six chances, if not more. I had Greg Schaefer on a couple uh, podcasts ago, and I I talked to him after the game. and He said even if 50% of one of those things went right in our favor, we win the game. It's just so frustrating that so many opportunities out there, we just couldn't seal the deal. But we have to get over that. We're not over that. Be pissed off about it so it doesn't happen again when those opportunities arise. But we're going to find out about this team, whether they're still locked in for the season and if they can bounce back and keep focused uh, to try to make it into the playoffs. They got to take it one game at a time. But uh, we're going to see how this uh, how good this team is. I think they are still a pretty good team. I hope the coaches learn from their gaffes uh, during this breakdown, meltdown, whatever you want to call it against Ohio State. And uh, just go forward, because I think if if they're locked in, if they're uh, pissed off from the last game, uh, they're gonna they're gonna beat the crap out of Duke. Let's just put it that way. But some general information first: Notre Dame dropped to number eleven in the poll, so it's number eleven Notre Dame at Duke. Notre Dame is four and one. Duke is undefeated. That's why College Game Day is there. They're four and zero, ranked currently ranked number seventeenth. They are coached by Mike Elko. You probably remember that name. He took over the defense for Notre Dame in 2017 when Brian Kelly had to revamp uh, that defense after that pitiful 4-8 team in 2016. And Jack Swarbrick pretty much said, you got to start uh, getting this defense in shape or your job's on the line. Uh, Coach Kelly did that. He got Coach Elko. And I believe Coach Elko brought along Clark Lee, who became our defensive coordinator after Mike Elko left for Texas A&M. He does uh, some pretty good things at Texas A&M. Then he comes to Duke and he will be a, I think a, a college coach of a major uh, football program within the next two to three years, if not sooner, he's done a great job at Duke. Um, They are currently four and oh, just to give you a brief synopsis or not a synopsis, but uh, who they played so far this year, they had that big game. uh, I think that was Labor Day weekend against Clemson. That game was at home and they, they killed Clemson 28 to seven which was a big win for them, don't get me wrong, but we're finding out Clemson's not as good as what we thought. Uh, they also had a home victory against Lafayette, 42-7. to Another home win against Northwestern, 38-14. to And then they just recently beat UConn at UConn, 41-7. to um, Notre Dame comes in a 28-game winning streak in the regular season against ACC opponents. You say regular season, what? We were one season in 2020, we were actually in the ACC First time Notre Dame was ever in a league for football. I believe that's the case. I don't. I, that, if they were in a league at one time, it was way, way back in the olden days. But pretty much that's been the thing. Notre Dame's been independent in football forever. And uh, that 2020 season, we beat Clemson in the regular season, but then lost in the ACC championship. But the last regular season loss Notre Dame had to an ACC opponent was in 2017, where we lost to Miami. We got annihilated in that game. Another big stage game where we... Uh, just couldn't win the big game. Uh, just some quick notes injury wa- injury wise. This is as of Monday night, but Dion Colsey will be out for this game. He's had some knee issues the past uh, few games. I don't remember the last time I think I saw him actually catch a pass was the Navy game. I could be wrong. He may have played in some 
other games after that, but he's going to have his knee scoped and probably be out for the next four games. And then Jaden Thomas is questionable right now. So if Jaden Thomas doesn't play, that just gives more opportunity for our talented freshmen, Rico Flores Jr. and Jaden Greathouse, and then also gives more opportunity for Tobias Merriweather to start not having one to two catches per game and then also get Chris Tyree involved a little bit more as well because I thought he was going to have a big game after that first catch at Ohio State, and then he pretty much disappeared. Uh, so after having said that, that's just some some general information. Uh, this game, oh, I forgot. It's, it is, I said before, it's game day, ESPN, their 9 to noon show, but this is another primetime game for Notre Dame. So it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. So there's the general information there. Let's get into the stats. And surprising to me, I know Duke was having a pretty good year this year, but their stats are pretty uh, similar to Notre Dame. Uh, offensively, Notre Dame averages 477 yards a game. Duke averages 425. Uh, passing, Notre Dame is 278 to Duke's 224. They both run the ball r- really well. I wish we would have ran the bell a little bit more Saturday night, but I got to get over that Ohio State game where we could have just ran out the clock, but I digress. Uh, We averaged 199 yards per game, Duke 200. Uh, Yards allowed, we're giving up 260 a game to Duke's 276. We only allow 149 yards passing. Uh, Duke only allows 143. Yards rushing, we allow 111 to Duke's 133. So we should try to exploit that run differential for run yards allowed, uh, if they're average, if they're giving up about 133, we should try to attack that with more of a balanced approach than what we did on Saturday night. Uh, their quarterback, his name is Riley Leonard. He actually was going to, I don't know if he's going to walk on or have a part a scholarship with the basketball team as well, but he ended up not doing that. And I think Coach K was still there at the time. Uh, he's currently has 778 yards passing and two TDs. And then their top running back is Jordan Waters, uh, 39 carries for 258 yards and seven TDs. And then their leading receiver is, uh, I think his name's Jalen or, yeah, Jalen Calhoun with uh, 20 receptions for 258 yards in comparison to our leading receiver. And I know Sam Hartman spreads it around, but Chris Tyree, nine receptions, 241 and two TDs. And I don't have to, Aldrick Estime, I don't know if he's still the leading rusher in the nation, but... Still solid number, 77 carries, 591 for five TDs. And Sam Hartman, uh, 81 for 115, 1,236 yards, 14 touchdowns. Still, he has zero interceptions. But as I said earlier, we need to be locked locked into this game. Yes, I see, for this game, I do see Duke. They're going to have a big crowd at the game, and they're going to be pumped up from the game day. I think they maybe make some plays early on. We just have to... Stay locked in, stay focused. I know that's a you hear that term always, but that's just tr- really true for this game. If we do not turn the ball over, capitalize on opportunities, we have way better athletes than Duke. It's just plain and simple. Play our game, let no turnovers, do not have missed opportunities like we had Saturday night. We are way better athletes than Duke, and we should win this game fairly easily. Uh, what else here? Um, I'm just trying to – oh, this was the thing I, I didn't mention in my previous podcast. Yes, we did lose to Ohio State, but I'm still seeing, especially on the defensive side, that relentless attitude. That has not wavered all year. And even that final drive against Ohio State, it was still rel- – they were still going full go. It was just some questionable plays that I think their coaches put them in some bad situations. But that's what we got to do with this game with Duke as well. That crowd's going to be pumped up. Thing is, it's not that big of a stadium. Some high schools are probably bigger than what where Duke plays at. But be relentless on defense despite the crowd. Even if Duke makes some plays early on, just stay relentless the whole game. And talent will overcome uh, the, the, the underdog Duke uh, team is what I'm trying to say. Talent will prevail over a pumped-up uh, Duke team. Because if we play our game and limit the mistakes – Duke cannot beat us. And that's what I'm going to say. 35 to 17, Notre Dame bounces back to get back into the win column, to stay focused, uh, to get that, to try to get a playoff uh, appearance because they will have to win out. Every game now is a must win for Notre Dame. And if you lose, 
the best you can get is probably a New Year's Six, which wouldn't be bad. But the ultimate goal is to get into the playoffs and compete for a national championship. What else here? Uh, I think that's about. Like I said this isn't. This is one of these podcasts where you pretty much just like the team has to be. Got to get over that Ohio State game. Get it out of your system. Uh, never let that happen again where you miss out on the opportunities to seal the game. But during the OSU game, I just felt at times, not all the time, but after that first drive or first couple of drives when I thought we were moving the ball around, but we weren't going downfield. But to me, the game plan seemed very eerily similar to when we had Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner at, at the quarterback position where it was very high percentage throws, taking no chances downfield, very conservative. And we got to get... We're playing Duke this weekend. Yes, Ohio State was a lot better than Duke. But for Duke, there should be some ample opportunities to go downfield. I want a balanced approach. Don't get me wrong. But we've got to get Sam back into the approach of being that gunslinger because that's what we got him for. This is only a year rental that we have him. After next year, who knows who's going to be the starter at quarterback for Notre Dame? Whether it's Steve Angeli, Kenny Minchie, CJ Carr is a true freshman. Or do we go back to the portal again because we – don't have enough trust in the younger guys, but we got to get Sam back into uh, slinging that ball around, especially downfield, because that's what we have him for. We only have him a year. To me, I always say it's a year rental, and that's it. We got to use him as much as we can. If we want to make a, a push into the playoffs or for that New Year's Six Bowl game, or just to really uh, have a successful season, and to me, it's not successful unless we make it to the playoffs. Best other case scenario is that New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, that'd be great to get a, a, a big bowl win after 30 years as well, since we haven't won a big game for 30 years. So, uh, yeah, that's what I really wanted to focus on there. Get Sam back to going downfield again. Uh, what else here? I think that's about it. Uh, pretty much the message of this podcast is you got to get over that Ohio State game. Us fans, uh, the team has to get over it, but just have it in the back of your mind to never let that happen again. When the opportunity arises, you got to you got to take it. Uh, uh, you got to take advantage of that opportunity. I actually heard too. I don't know if this is true. It's it's in the rumor mill right now that after the game, uh, Coach Freeman uh, made his players come back to the field and watch that last five minutes of the game. I do not know if that's true. That's just hearsay right now. But I do like if that's true. I like that approach to say, kind of put salt in the wound right there to, to say, hey, this will never happen again. When we have the opportunity to beat a top 10, now a top five team in Ohio State, you got to seal the deal. There's no more moral victories uh, for Notre Dame after this. Maybe last year we could have some moral victories because everything was so new. But if that's true that he actually did that, I cannot prove that. So do not quote me on that. But if he brought the team back out to watch the last five minutes of that game to, to pretty much tell them, uh, yes, this is putting salt in the wounds right now, but this is never going to happen again. But And further, if that's the case, I hope he brought his assistant coaches out there as well, both the offensive coordinator and the defense, and, and Marcus Freeman as well, because the coaches, I think, failed them as well Saturday night. Maybe that's a lesson for both himself and his coaching staff. Can't approve that it happened, but i like if it did happen. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 105 of the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz. And as always, go Irish.